raiding party around. Oh, they warned us to take the long trail through through Antelope Valley. Well, Indians usually don't travel alone. When they do, they don't cause trouble. Well, what else could it be? I wasn't on anybody's land. What about you? You cause any trouble yourself in town? Well, not unless you call trouble getting stuck for a couple of tickets to a, a church lottery. You <laughs> bought tickets? Ladies caught me with money in my hands. You sure you don't know anybody around here? Well, I've been up this trail a time or two, but I never even saw the town before. Whoever was shooting at me sure wasn't taking any chances. He wanted me dead before he showed himself, and he darn near got his way. Beats me. Me too. It beats all of us. Maybe there's no answer to it. Well, let's just go back there and root him out. No, chances are it was a Comanche. And if there's a raiding party around here anywhere, like up ahead on the trail maybe, we better take that sheriff's advice. Antelope Valley? You want to scout ahead the bed ground? No, I'd like to do a little scouting on my own. Make sure it was a Comanche. You can go back there? Yeah, try to track him down. Alone, you already shot at once. I mean, this time, I'll be expecting trouble. Yeah, that's all right. You go on ahead. Jim can do the scouting. You'll learn more with four eyes and two. No, thanks, Simon, but this is my game. Wish. Will you be able to find this tonight? Yeah, but I'll be back late. Best way to spot him is to watch for his night camp. Well, just find out who it is. Don't try to even any scores, huh? I'll be careful. Now, suppose the rest of us ought to get in the saddle. Check your ammunition, huh? Who's on night guard, anyway? Um, Simon and Cisco. I better go have a look. Quiet enough to put a man to sleep. If I think tonight, it won't be to quiet him down. It'll be to keep me awake. You're looking for Jed, huh? Uh, just looking. Well, I'm watching too. He said he might be late. Well, keep your eyes open, will you? You mean for that sniper? Yeah, he could be around. Well, I've been watching. Don't you worry, Mr. Yates. <laughs>
Mr. Yates? No, I'll get his rifle, will you? Take this, too. You can move into camp. Hey, Roddy, who you got with you? Well, we're going to find out. Hey, he's wearing a badge. Yeah, where'd you get that? I've been wearing it the best part of my life. You trying to tell us you're a lawman? You can see the badge. Well, it's a federal badge, all right, and a real one. It don't necessarily mean it's his badge. It's my badge. If you're a federal law officer, why didn't you come on in? What are you doing sneaking around out there? I'm looking for someone. For who? He wouldn't be using his right name. Uh, maybe you have some sort of credentials on you you wouldn't mind showing? Anson Dixon, U.S. Marshal, 4th Federal District. Missouri. Well, sure, you are Marshal Dixon. Dixon? You're the one that cleaned the Pickett brothers out of Cedar City. That's right. Uh, and he's the one that hunted down Bill Claggett and shot it out with him in Abilene, too. Oh, well, Roddy, maybe we've been a little out of line. I mean, interfering with the U.S. Marshal on legal business. That's if it's legal business including shooting somebody. Has that been fired? Sure has. Most of the cylinder. What were you shooting at, Marshal? The man I came after. I almost got him this morning. I missed him, but I picked up his trail. To here? To here. I figure he's one of your men. Yeah, I figure that too, because you were shooting at one of my men today. Uh, my question is, why, huh? I told you why. He's the man I came after. Jed Colby? That's not his right name. What then? James Crothers. I got a warrant for him here, sworn out at Short Creek. You get the right man. There's no mistake. You want to give me back my guns? Yeah, if you wanted them so bad, how come you tried to shoot him? He's wanted dead or alive. It's easier to take a man dead. Under some circumstances. I'd rather take him alive, but he's dangerous. Jed? James Crothers. He's probably on his good behavior here. He's a good man. I ain't about to let him get shot in the back by a sniper, badge or no badge. Then maybe you'd like to help me take him without violence. I'd like to hear his side of the story first. I'm not sure he's the man you say he is. You either, for that matter. You haven't said where he went. Well, strangely enough, he's out looking for you. Then he'll be back. So I'll stay here. Yeah, that's good. I keep an eye on you that way. Simon, let me get on back out there. Let me remind you all, if you want him, you'll be violating the law. Where are you going? Uh, I've got a herd out there and night riders i got to check on. If that's any of your business... I'll come with you. No, you won't. Stay right here in the light where the boys can keep an eye on you. You don't want any sniping going on around this camp. Well, that badge of yours doesn't bother me too much, Dixon. It's my camp. We'll play it my way. Yet? 
Yeah, Rowdy. What are you doing out here? I thought it might have been you gunning for me. Nothing out there except a Comanche sign, but it's a day or two old. It beats me. Yeah, he's waiting for you. Who? Your man. He rode on in. And he followed me. Why didn't I think of that? And you've got him. Good. Uh, well, let me just say he's there. He's waiting for you. What do you mean? The marshal said he wants you. Me? What for? You're wanted for murder in Missouri. But your real name is James Crowder. Yeah, I used the name once. What's his name? Dixon. Hanson Dixon. And you know him? Yeah, I know him. Come on, I want to see for sure. ago, he arrested me for murder. He figured I'd killed a man named Ed Carley, but I didn't. They didn't even bring it to trial because they proved I couldn't possibly have done it. I was cleared completely. What's he want you for now, then? You've heard of hanging judges. Well, Dixon's a hanging marshal. He prides himself on the men he's brought to the gallows. He wanted me there, but they released me. Only he never gives up. He said he didn't believe the evidence. Said he could bring out new evidence. Well, maybe he did, huh? He couldn't have. I don't know what he's cooked up. Whatever it is, I'm not guilty of murder. Well, I'll tell you, Judge, you're going to have to clear yourself. If I surrender to him now, I'd never get back to Missouri alive. Well, what are you going to do, run? I'm trying to explain to you why I have to. I'd see the day you'd even think about running. I've got to. Between Dixon and me, it's kill or be killed. And I don't want to kill him any more than I want him to kill me. Well, it's a temptation to me to take a shot at him right now. Jed. I'm sorry, Rowdy. I'd like to have stayed on with you. Hello, just a minute. What are you going to do, stop me? Hold me for him? No, I just want you to know what you're getting into. Once you start running, there ain't gonna be any turning back. I know that, and I don't like it. But I've got no choice, or I would be a murderer. things I'd like to know about this man of yours you call Colby. Well, first, there's a few more things I'd like to know. What? More about the charge you have against him. You read the warrant? It's murder. Uh, who'd he kill? When? A boy named Ed Carley a couple of years ago. Mm. I heard he was clear of that charge. There's new evidence. Mm. What kind of evidence? That's not my business. I just make the arrest. He was out there, wasn't he? You warned him. Helped him to run. All right, mister, I warned you. You're under arrest for aiding the escape of a wanted criminal. And going into Short Creek to jail. You just gotta take somebody in, don't you, Dixon? 
Just drop your guns. No. You better drop yours. Unless you want a bag full of lead. No, Simon. He is wearing a star. Well, you're not going with him, are you? Well, I just do that. Find out how much authority he really has. You'll find out. Get moving. No, hold it. Not without an escort. I just don't want you to make any mistakes with a gun. Jim, uh, you hold the herd here. We got grass and water enough for two days. Simon, you ride along with me and the marshal here. Well, Marshal Dixon, you get your man? Not the right one. But I want this man jailed for aiding a criminal to escape. He hasn't got a shred of evidence to prove that. Well, his word's good enough for me. Get down. When can I see a judge? That'll take at least a week. Our judge is a circuit rider. Look, I've got a herd to take care of. That's not my problem. You better tell your men that they're in for a long wait. Well, we haven't got any time for a long wait. The grass is getting bad and so is the water. And there's Indians out there. Nothing I can do about that. They'll have to take care of themselves. Now get down. Once your boss out, maybe you better go get Jeff Colby and bring him back. now, cowboy? That you're a marshal? Maybe so. But as far as Jed being a criminal, you'll have to prove that before I believe it. I don't have to prove anything to you, and I don't intend to. Well, you'll have to prove it to a court, and you couldn't do that two years ago. I will this time. I doubt it. I doubt if you'll even risk it. Think what you like. You want to tell me now where he went? I don't know. What direction? I have no idea. He told you nothing? Nothing, no. You didn't ask? No, I didn't ask. And he had no supplies. And he can't go far without them. You go over to that little valley. Toward the towns on the other side. I'll go that way after him, after I've had a little sleep. You need help, Marshal? I could raise a posse. No, I've done it alone so far. I don't need any help. You don't need any help to uh, shoot a man in the back. This Colby told you that, I guess. Maybe he didn't tell you that's the way he did the killing I want him for. Shot a man from behind. I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe, cowboy. I'll be at the hotel if you should get any news. All right, Marshal. No, well, Yates, you're not helping yourself any. You're in enough trouble now. Tell me, Sheriff, it ever occur to you that he might be wrong? Hanson Dixon? Uh-uh. He's one of the most respected marshals in the West. Don't you think it's uh, kind of unusual that he's come all the way out here from Missouri just to arrest one man? Well, it uh, may be not usual. Would the normal thing uh, be is to send word to you and have you pick him up? Well, if he was supposed to be here in town, maybe yes. But with the herds coming up, having to be watched, that would be something special. Well, still, I think he should be back there in Missouri attending to his duties. Well, maybe he could be on special assignment. Did you bother to ask him that? No. After all, he's Marshal Dixon. He must have authority for whatever he's doing. Just one more thing, Sheriff. Did he ever show you a wanted poster on this man, Carter? No. No, I can't say he has. Does that bother you? Look, Yates. I told you that whatever Marshal Dixon says is all right with me. I'm not the one who has to go after the man anyway. Well, but you are responsible for protecting the man's life. 
Are you trying to say that your man is in danger from Dixon? He tried to kill him once before. And maybe he had a reason. He's a marshal. After a criminal. And that's good enough reason for me. Anything you want that I can get? No, nothing. Oh, uh, tell my drover out there and I can talk to him. I'll send him in. What do we do? Not we, you. You get that herd moving, say, to Antelope Valley. Leave you here? Uh, don't worry. They'll have to let me go as soon as the judge arrives. What if they don't? I'll manage. Just get that herd moving through the valley. I'll catch up to you. Look, I don't want to do that, Mr. Yates. Look, I better run at the boys and get you out of here. And get everybody in trouble? Look, uh, they got no case on me. As soon as Dixon leaves, they're bound to let me go. I'll get moving. Yes, sir. in jail. That's what he ought to wish. He only thinking of the herd and what's best for him, that's all. Well, then he isn't thinking so good. Now, he never went off and left us anywhere. I'm not going off and leave him. Wish? You'd rather we go after Jed and bring him back? Well, no, that's not what I meant. Then what? Now, I told Roddy we'd come down and break him out, but he said no, it'd just make more trouble. He's right, Wish. They got no case against him. There's no call to hold him once Dixon leaves. Then I'm going to stay right here. Until Dixon leaves and Rowdy's out. But the herd needs more grass, Wish. Well, they can do without for a day or two. They've had it too easy lately. Well, look who's here. Uh, what are you doing back here? Glad you're still here. That marshal around anywhere? No, he's in town. Good. I figured you would have started by now. I'm glad you didn't. You can't go through Antelope Valley. It's full of Comanches. You're going to have to turn the herd around and take the regular trail. You risk your neck to come back and tell us that. You sure I couldn't let you ride right into those Comanches? Well, you better get started. Hey, yeah, but you got to get out of here first. We're not leaving right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Where's Rowdy? Rowdy, well, he'll be back directly. Come on now. Where is he? He's in jail. In jail? What for? Well, there's nothing to worry about. 
Now, wait a minute. Dixon took him in for helping me get away, didn't he? Now, take it easy, Jed. He ain't got nothing on him and can't prove a thing. He'll be out in no time. Sure, they're bound to turn him loose real soon, Jed. Now, come on. Not if Dixon has anything to say about it. He's liable to be in prison for years. Impossible. Anyway, it's not for you to worry about. We got ourselves a plan all worked out now. I'll bet I know what it is. You plan on breaking him out, isn't that right? And maybe you'll all have to go to prison. No, it's nothing like that at all. Now, you get out of here. I'm going. Rowdy was right. What do you mean? There's no running away. I should have known that. What are you going to do? Something I should have done before. But, Jed, this fight is between Dixon and me. And I'm going to keep it that way. I understand you're looking for me, Dixon. Get off that horse. Drop your gun. Don't try anything, brothers. I'll take him into jail if you want, Marshal. No, I told you before, Sheriff, I don't need any help. Any man I've ever gone after, I've brought in by myself. Well, he came in of his own free will to give himself up. Now, don't you think that... He's a wanted killer, Sheriff. You stay out of it. Let me handle him. What he's trying to say is he'd like you to look the other way. Just long enough for him to gun me down. Not in my town. You giving yourself up, mister? That's what I'm here for. All right, I'll take that gun belt. Oh, just one thing more. You made a mistake about Yates in there. You can't hold him because you don't have a case against him. Because I'll swear to it that he never tried to help me escape. This changes things. I'll put him in a cell until I can arrange for transportation. Stage East goes out in three hours. Now, what about Yates? I don't care what you do with him. I've got the man I came for. take a little trip to Missouri. Oh, that's a dumb idea. Yeah, isn't it? Anyhow, you're wanted back at the herd. Let him out. He had nothing on me. No, you're just one of his mistakes. Well, I didn't need you to correct it for me. Maybe i just like to travel. You haven't traveled yet, and you might not. Marshal, I'd like to see a wanted poster on that man in there. Why? It's none of your business. It is my business. He happens to be one of my top hands. I don't believe he's a murderer. I don't care what you believe. How does he want it at all? Now, oh, wait a minute, Yates. Why would the Marshal be here otherwise? You know, I'd like to know that. He made a mistake about me. How do you know he hasn't made a mistake about Jed? In 25 years as a Marshal, I have never made a mistake about a criminal. Every man I went after paid for his crime. Well, then show us a wanted poster. By the way, how come the sheriff here, he never received one? I don't have to answer to you, Yates, and I don't intend to. But let me warn you again. I'm taking him out on the next stage east. And you'd better not try to stop me. Sheriff. Doesn't it seem kind of strange to you? Hmm? In your your experience as being a lawman, every man you ever arrested was guilty? You never made a mistake? No, I, I can't say that. I don't think anyone can. I know that man in there. He swears he's telling the truth. There's no charge on him. Well, then he has nothing to fear back there. If he ever gets back there. You're not seriously suggesting. Yes, I am seriously suggesting. I think Dixon has any intention of getting him back there. I think he plans to shoot him. He tried it yesterday, and he could have captured him. 
He takes him back to Missouri, he's going to find there's no charge waiting on him. But why? That's a good question. I think the man is possessed by some need to be proven right, even if it's only to himself. Well, there's one way we can find out. Huh? Telegraph from Sarah. Ask about this James Crothers. Come on. waiting on that stage. Why, sure. It's easy to kill him this way. We better go riding, too. All right. Better go tell Rowdy, though. Now, he'll never let us hold up a man with a star. Look, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Now, you come on. Third of charges not wanted. No new charges or evidence known here. Never heard of Jed Colby. Anson Dixon retired as U.S. Marshal. Present whereabouts unknown. Well, I guess that about says it. Well, you were right. It's a good thing we didn't let him get away. Come on, let's get back. Marshal Dixon came by and got him. We left our horses maybe 15 minutes ago. Dixon, why don't you get it over with? What's wrong with right here? Oh, you want to get further away from that sheriff, don't you? You don't want anyone coming after you. You're trying to force me into making a move before I'm ready. Forget it. You're wasting your time, Crothers. What if I decide not to go back with you? That's up to you. Because I'll take you back. Dead if I have to. You got some special reason for coming all this way after me? Was Ed Carley some special friend of yours? I didn't even like him. You got some special hate for me? 
Hardly knew you. Was it because I rode with the Cross X bunch? Were you on the other side of that feud? I had no use for either side. Then why? Save your breath, Crothers, while you can. Name is Colby. I only used Crothers when I went to work for the Cross X bunch. Figured I might get into some kind of trouble. You did. I asked you something. Why? You wouldn't understand. Why, Dixon? All right, Crothers, I'll tell you. Once. I've been a lawman better than half my life. Never made more than $40 in one month. Never had a place or money enough for a wife and kids. I got a half-gimped leg from taking in the Barlow gang. And a silver plug here, a bone, where I let a drunk prisoner pistol club me once. Just once. 25 years on out as a lawman and nothing better than that to show for it. Except for one thing. Not one man I ever took in got loose from me. Not one. Except for me, is that it? That's it. Not one, except for you. You were right, Dixon. I wouldn't understand. What are you going to do when you get back? Tell him I confessed and then try to run away and you had to shoot me. Is that what you're going to tell him, Dixon? I've got the confession all written out. And you're going to sign it. Before you die. No. No, I'm not. I've been told that by suspects before. And they ended up with their names signed on confessions. So will you. Hold up over there. Dixon, come on out. We know your prisoner's not wanted. Dixon! Come on. I owe you all some thanks. Forget it. All 
All right, let's get into the town. All right. Guys, this whole thing will go away. Uh, rotten there. I thought you'd dearly love the good hoedown. Yeah, with people, but I heard of Buffalo. Oh. <laughs> of it later, but right now we got something more important. Hey, Marshal! I guess my dance is pretty rusty, Mr. Wishbone. Will you dance yourself right into that supply wagon and get that surprise I made? Oh, yes, sir. Surprise? The thing I made this morning, you idiot. Now, come on, bring some boxes down here. We'll make a table. What's the surprise, Wish? It's too soon for Christmas. Is it for all of us? No, it's not for all of us. It's for Mr. Rowdy Ramrod Yates. Me? Yeah, that's right. Couldn't wishbone book. It's your birthday, boy. Yes, sir. I'm the cook and the nursemaid in the county courthouse around here. All right, everybody, let her rip. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. I don't know what to say, except because if it wasn't for Wishbone, we'd all forget we were ever born. <laughs> I figure he deserves the first piece. Sorry to interrupt your festivities. Anything I can do for you, mister? Well, something, someone. We have business with one of your men. It's private business. Well, it's been a long time, Cabot. Well, oh, not too long. Long enough to finish what's between us. Well, there's nothing to settle. Nothing to begin with. What do you think there was? You might as well face it. We spent a lot of time tracking you down. We won't leave till it's settled. Take a choice, Yates. Settle now, or get used to the idea of living with ghosts you can't bury. Jesus, get my horse, will you? If you say so, senor. Well, Mr. Roddy, your cake. I forget it much. What's it all about? That's an old problem. My business. You don't have to be. Just say the word. Now, this is one of those things I gotta do alone. Well, if you do need any help, you know where we are. Well, like I said, gentlemen, forgive me for interrupting your party. send somebody after him? Well, whatever it is, the man says he wants to go it alone. You ride all night for this? There's others going to meet us here. Thought about this a long time, haven't you, Kevin? Six years, Yates. Six long years. Inside.
out, Yates. Not up there. Not down here. But you want the truth, Cabot. Truth is the trial of itself. You know, with 44 is the judge and jury, huh? You won't get any answers out of a dead man, or the ghosts of a dead town, for that matter. Answers, Yates? Yeah. There's only one answer. You're looking at it. <laughs> I might ask you the same question, sir. You gentlemen are trespassing. A ghost town? Here, yeah, most of all, sir. With such infinite privacy, the slightest transgression is greatly attenuated. You still haven't answered my question. Who are you? Alexander Langford, sir. At your service. Gentlemen, my world, my town, my home. <laughs> and probably very soon, my grave. I was a judge, sir, and before that, a lawyer. This is where I defended my clients and sat in judgment. These clients of yours, Mr. Langford, where are they? Gone, my friend. Scattered like leaves in a windstorm. Something to do with mine failure, as I recall. But you came back. Life's but a summer, sir. Man, little more than a flower, he dies. How soon he dies. For me, better here when I know what I am. So you see, sir, ghosts and I have much in common. And you're just the man we need. Yates, you said you wanted a trial. You got it. We even got ourselves a judge. You misunderstood, sir. I no longer have the authority to hear cases. Or the desire. In a dead town, I'm afraid that authority is only a word. As for desire, I'm certain that we can find a way to change your mind. Don't! I knew you'd change your mind, judge. Now, you just get back up on that bench and make yourself comfortable. It won't be long. <laughs> should be along any time now. much of a judge, does he? Make any difference? Your friends. They're not here yet? I'll tell you when, Your Honor. I don't think I've had the honor, sir. Name's Yates, Rowdy Yates. I don't suppose you're interested why I'm here. You don't suppose correctly, sir. Your name is all I'll need. Unmarked graves always did disturb me. Inside, then we'll need this. Well, how are you, Cal? <laughs> no, it's all right. You look fine, Cal.
He remembers you, Cal. That man. What's wrong with that man? Same thing as the matter with Cabot. Only with him, you can see it. waiting around. Ain't that right, Yates? No, oh, not yet. We're still one short. Anyway, we're gonna have a trial. We have ourselves a real bona fide judge over there. The best that whiskey can buy. Just the kind of man to see that we don't break any laws. After all, we couldn't have Yates here saying that his judgment day was illegal, could we? No, we couldn't have that. Gentlemen, please, you better proceed without me. You see, I have no robes. We don't stand on ceremony, Judge. You just get back to your little bench. Yeah, but my robes... Now! Well, Judge. This court is now in session, and I must remind you that certain formalities must be observed. Save the speeches, Langford. Let's get this done. As long as I'm acting judge here, sir, I must insist on due process of law. You're absolutely right, Judge. Due process of law. It's the way we want it, isn't it? Very well. You may proceed. The court martial of Private Rowdy Yates, Confederate States of America, is now in session. Court martial? But the Confederacy ceased to exist six years ago. You have no authority, sir. Like I said, Judge, in a dead town, authority is just a word. On the board of the court martial, Corporal Leslie Bellamy, CSA. Private Samuel Jordan, CSA. Corporal Cal Mason, CSA. Captain Francis Cabot, CSA. The prisoner will come forward and hear the charges. General charge that on or about August 15th in the year 1864 in the Union Prisoner of War Camp at Yuma, Private Yates did perform an act of treason against the Army of the Confederacy. Specific charge number one. The Private Yates did willfully betray to the Union camp commander an escape plan. Number two, the Private Yates betrayal resulted in the death of two men, Privates Quintle and Burke. Number three, the Private Yates betrayal resulted in the paralysis of Corporal Cal Mason. Well, Judge? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <laughs> there will be order in this court, if you please. As you say, Judge. We can't have anyone held in contempt now, can we? With your permission, the prosecution will begin the case. You may proceed. The first witness will be Private Samuel Jordan. What's that for? The beginning, Judge. It all started with this, the deadline. That's where we first met Yates. We'd all been captured, all of us, the captain, the whole third platoon. And they marched us to this muckle they called a prison camp. 5,000 men jammed in a stockade so tight you couldn't even squat. It was about as high as that wall. And every 50 feet, there was a guard with a rifle pointed down. And on the ground, about 10 feet in front of the wall, was this, this line. In between the stockade poles, there were gaps. And we were all walking toward them. Because we wanted to look out. Grass and trees. 
anything green and grown and alive. Hey, Yates comes in on his push and his back. That's what a dead line is. You cross it, you're dead. That's right, and you would have been dead too, all of you, if I hadn't stepped in. Right behind him comes Major Holbrook. You and Holbrook. Always at the same time in the same place. Holbrook? The camp commander. We called him the butcher from Boston. Ah, you men are lucky. New men have to learn the hard way. Now, I can cross this line because my uniform is blue. Ah, you're not confined to any one area. You are free to roam at will. Square yard of peace to walk in. And if you are injured, you will be given hospital care. Where you will promptly die. Now, when you first met Private Yates, he saved your lives. Your Honor, must be mighty thirsty work asking all those questions. Yes, Captain. Mighty thirsty. That's right, Cabot. Don't let him ask any of the wrong questions. You wanted a trial. You're getting it. Did you hear that, Judge? He said this is a trial. He hates. Don't push too hard. Bellamy, you're forgetting. Due process of law. Now let him talk. Yeah, let him talk, but just don't listen. Don't interfere with their thinking. Mr. Yates, you must try to understand. I cannot influence my own thinking, much less another man's. Look, Langford, I ain't one of your ghosts. You stick me and I bleed. Now, you didn't have to be a part of this thing, but as long as you've gone along and, and you're behind that bench, it's got to mean something to you. Yates is right, Your Honor. This is a trial. Look, you brought him into this thing, Cabot. Now, let him decide what the truth is, will you? Fine, we'll let him decide. I'm just not one to see a man suffer, that's all. Go on, Judge, put out the fire. <sighs> Private Jordan, you may continue. Well, after that first day, Private Yates showed us the ropes. He taught us how to live in that stinking camp. And then we started talking about escape. And the first plan was his idea. The first plan? Yeah, there, there were two attempts to escape. What was the first? The coffin route. Coffin route? You want to tell it, Captain? No. No, Jordan, that's Mason's story. turn now, Cal. Now listen to me. You nod when I say things are right and shake your head when I don't. You got that? These were my men. All of them. And they weren't going to rot like the rest of them. Not while I was there, Captain. The others were dying like flies. The Blue Jacks had us cart them off in wheelbarrows, box them up, and dump them in these long graves. Now when things were at their worst, that's when Yates got his idea. It was our plan, all of us. You're not on the witness stand yet, Mr. Yates. It's all right, Judge. Let him tell the story his way. All right. The, uh, Holbrook, he had me uh, on this detail of building these coffins out of pine, sort of like these. Well, there's about 20 deaths a day in that prison, sometimes a few more and sometimes less. When there was less, there would be coffins left over. The, the empty coffins, they were the way out. Yates thought so. He wanted us to climb into the empty boxes, get hauled out, and get buried. He said you could split the top of the coffin with your fist. The grave was shallow. All you had to do was climb out. I was willing to be buried alive to try it out. All of us were. You had to have it your own way. It was my decision to make. So you sent along Mason along to test it. If it all gone, we'd all be dead. Gentlemen, please. This is still a court of law. I implore you, we must have order. Who are you to implore anything? Bellamy, now, my apologies, Judge. Oh, he's right. We agreed that one should go. We agreed it was for the best. You understood that now, didn't you, Cal? Now. 
Exhibit B. Captain, do you have to do that? <laughs> no, Cal, trust me now. Trust me. I said that to him then. Cal, trust me, you'll be free and well. Anyway, we hammered him in. The work detail came. Yates had the coffin stacked up on the grave carts, and then they took him out. What happened was an accident. Or oh, was it Yates? The horses took him out. Now, when he came back, three men were carrying him. And he was like he is right now, half paralyzed, unable to speak. What happened? It was dark and the horses were skittish. One of them shied and the coffins fell off the wagon. The wagon ran over two of the coffins. Mason was in one of them. You wanted him caught. You afraid he'd get away and you wouldn't. You did that! Bellamy. Captain, we can't leave him in there. All right, get him out. The coffin served its purpose. Right, Judge? The paths of glory lead but to the grave. No coffin has served its purpose, Captain. Not until its four walls quiet the troubling of the wicked and deaden the din of the weary. Robert Burns was one to say there's courage in Mr. Barleycorn. What I need right now doesn't come in a bottle. Mm. What's holding him up? A witness named Quintle. Quintle? Quintle's dead. Look, Langford, I, I guess you know you're the only one who can help me out. Help you? <laughs> there is no heaven. There is no hell. These be the dreams of baby minds. This is my hell, Mr. Yates, and my master. I cannot even help myself. And what are you doing here? Hmm, curiosity. <laughs> Probably compassion. Compassion? For me or for you? Conscience, Mr. Yates, is God's presence. And man, that luxury I lost long ago, thanks to this. I was a lion among men, a tiger on the high wire of justice. I would have fought for you then, but not now. No. This is the end of a long road for me. I didn't sell those men out. They never taste to always drink. They always talk. Who never think. So said Brutus, and so said Judas. Langford, I'm not guilty. Yeah, words, my dear sir. Words. I no longer hear them. I no longer believe them. I was a boy. And then a lawyer. And it seemed there was no time in between. Finally, I became a judge. The youngest in three states and two territories. Then one day, they brought in this young cowboy. He was accused of killing a man for the man's wife, but the evidence was circumstantial. The jury argued it out for two days, and then it was up to me to decide for them, one way or the other. 
I looked into that boy's soul. And I saw innocence. So I told them, and they let him go. Three days later, he killed the woman too. From that day on, the law ceased to exist for me. I cut it out and dissolved it in alcohol. Well, the man who refuses to remember the past sometimes condemned to repeat it. You want me to help you. Where do you think I'd find that much courage? Where well, it used to be. Still is, maybe. I said I would play a part. A clown. A buffoon. A play actor. On a stage of sand. That's how it has to be. It's not enough, Langford. If you won't cut me free, then you're gonna have to judge me. You'll have to stand behind that judgment. Not behind the bottle. Why did they have to bring you here? Why couldn't it have been somewhere else? They didn't bring me here. I came willingly. See, this thing ended once and for all. Ended? I saw eternity the other night, like a great ring. A pure and endless light. Nothing ends, Mr. Yates. Except hope. to your bench, back to your bottle. Mrs. Quintle, it's so good of you to have come. I had to. It was my duty, Captain Gabbett. Private Rowdy Yates. That was from my husband. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Court calls as a witness Mrs. Agnes Quintle, wife of the deceased Private Joshua Quintle. Mrs. Quintle, as I told you when we talked last month, we seek our own justice in our own way, so you may speak as you will. And who is he? Now, he's a judge. He's agreed to preside for us. I suppose that is the proper way. I don't know you. Not by your face, nor the way you speak. Only by your actions. And ever since Joshua died, I've kept myself alive, knowing that someday I would see you. And I'd watch you die with that around your neck. Uh, Mrs. Quintle, you obviously are aware of the charges against the defendant. Have you anything to add to the case against him? Yes. A letter. A forged letter. Supposedly from my husband, but actually written by Private Yates. Do you know of this letter, Private Yates? Yeah, I know of it. Why does Mrs. Quintle refer to it as a forgery? Uh, because Quintle's hands were injured. He asked me to write the letter in his place. It's all right there. That proves it was a forgery. Quintle never hurt his hands. Uh, Captain Cabot. Uh, this letter is admitted as evidence, but I don't understand. Uh, forgery or otherwise, what actual bearing does it have? 
Another link in the chain, another knot in the noose. He lied about the letter. He's lying about the betrayal. How did Private Quintal die? After our first escape attempt failed, we just wrote it off as bad luck. Then we began searching for another plan. We came up with a tunnel. Tunnel? An escape tunnel. It was to go from the floor in our shed across several feet of yard and then up underneath the stockade wall. It took us three months, three months to dig that tunnel. We clawed at that dirt with whatever we had at our disposal, with sticks, with pieces of iron, with our hands. Before we were finished, Yates here was committed to the infirmary. When we were ready, I went to him and told him that we were leaving that night. And what did Private Yates have to say? He couldn't say much because he was too sick, but I knew that we couldn't bring him along with us, so I told him that we were going to leave without him. Major Holbrook's men were waiting. Private Quintal was killed. Private Burke was killed. And the rest of us spent the remainder of the war in solitary. In other words, Captain, you're saying that because you wouldn't wait and take Yates with you, he told Holbrook what you were planning. That's the charge. Now all that's left is the verdict. Verdict, sir? Aren't you rushing things a little, Captain? After six years, a man's patience is honed down as thin as it can get. Captain, a point of law. It would not be fitting to hang the man until we've heard him speak. Besides, Mrs. Quintle has a question. It should be answered. The bench calls the defendant, Private Yates. Now tell us what happened, Private Yates, the way you saw it. Captain, we have to listen to all this. It's his right. I would like to hear what he has to say. All right, Mrs. Quintle. By all means, Yates, speak up. Just don't keep us too long. That's all I can do for you. Yeah. Well, you see, this tunnel he, he's talking about it was cold and it was damp, and we always had to worry about the thing caving in. I got this fever first, and so Cabot had Quintle take me to the infirmary. And that's where Quintle met Ruth Cogan. Ruth Cogan? This name hasn't been mentioned before. I'm sorry it has to be mentioned at all. Well, go on. Well, I'd like to ask Cabot a question. When was it that you and the others tried to make your escape? Mid-October. Take a look at the date on that letter, Judge. October the 18th. Every letter that went out of that prison camp, had to go through Holbrook, and that took at least two weeks. I mailed that letter on the first part of October. That was two weeks before Quintal was killed. Two weeks before Cabot told me that he was gonna have to leave without me. Well, go on, Mr. Yates. Bellamy, who was it that was always visiting me up there at the infirmary, keeping me informed on what was going on? Quintal? I don't see where this is leading us, Mr. Yates. Well, maybe to the truth about a nurse named Kogan who was friendly to all of us, maybe a little too friendly. You're reaching, Yates, a nurse who never existed, a rainbow on a rainy night. Won't work. I'm not reaching, Cabot. She existed all right, especially for Quindle. Simple enough. He thought he was in love with her. No, that's not true. He, he didn't love her. She was just a friend. And this Ruth Cogan did exist. Well, it was in his first letter. Joshua talked about visiting the infirmary and he said he met this woman. A and he said that she reminded him of me and she was kind to him. She was just a friend. He could have had a strong back, but inside he was scared and lonely. He reached out for this woman, and she let him. He hung on, that's all there was to hang on to. No. 
Oh, Joshua loved me. Yeah, but you weren't there, and he needed someone. Joshua wrote you a letter telling you all about me and the girl, but I begged him not to send it, telling him that as soon as he got out of here, everything would be the same as it always was. He wouldn't listen to me. But I never got such a letter. All right, because I burned it. I sent that one in its place, so you'd never have to know. Joshua always was like a little boy. He was afraid of being alone. He should have known that I would... I would have understood. I would have forgiven him. All right, so Quintle may have made a mistake, but it has nothing to do with Yates' guilt. Maybe it does, Cabot. A man like Quintle, desperate and lonely. Suppose he tells the Kogan woman about the escape plan. Suppose he tells her to meet him later on, huh? We're not supposing here, Yates. We're looking for facts. Jordan, Bellamy, think back on that night. What was Quintle acting like? What was he saying, huh? Well... Come on, Bellamy, spit it out. Kevin wants to hear it, don't you, Captain? Well, there, was, there was one thing. We were crawling through the tunnel, and Quintle kept muttering something about a light. It was after we had clawed through the last of the dirt and the brush. Quintle sort of half laughed and said, uh, she'll be waiting, something like that. Then all I remember are the shots. That still doesn't prove anything. You said that Joshua wrote you a letter when he first met the Kogan woman, telling you about how she reminded him of you. Was kind to him. Don't you think maybe in his mind she was you? My dear Agnes, I'm glad to know that things are good and that your mother is well. You don't know how much I miss you. I love you more every day I don't see you. Your handwriting, Mr. Yates, and your words, written for a woman you never saw. Captain Cowart, you spoke of the verdict. You spoke of hanging the accused, but your evidence it's not enough. To my mind, there is doubt. Considerable doubt. It could have been as the accused suggested. The verdict is still the same, Your Honor. Now, why don't you just retire to your chambers and have yourself a nice little drink while we settle this thing ourselves? Oh, no, Captain. Not until we've heard the last witness. The last witness? Captain Francis Cabot. Well, now, you're just borrowing time, Judge, and you're running out of credit. Primus in orbe. Deus Fica Timo. The voice of a dead language, Captain, spoken in a dead town. It was fear that first made gods in the world. What have you to fear? A man keeps a hate growing for all these years. He builds it up and shapes it into a crusade. Why? There wasn't enough. Not for the trial. Not from the testimony I've heard. Nothing but a terrible war and the terrible deaths of friends. Or were they friends? They were more than friends. They were my men. My responsibility. And what are they now, Captain? Are these people still your responsibility? I am still their officer, if that's what you mean. He smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. This war is only the ashes of dead memories to most men, but Captain Cavett is still your officer. Tell me, do you still salute? Do you still follow blindly? Without question or morality? This has gone far enough. What's the matter, Captain? You afraid to take a good look at yourself? The Confederacy was destroyed. You were an officer with no army. But you kept your war alive by creating an enemy, Private Yates. Through him and your own mantle of hatred, you kept your men together. A platoon to lead, a platoon to destroy. They needed me. 
Now you look at them. They couldn't have survived without me. Look at Mason. Where do you think he'd be without me? And Bellamy? And Jordan? I think for all of them. Just as you did when you wore a captain's gold and gray. No more. But you're still their officer. And they still need me. Wrong, Cabot. You need them. You need them so bad you're willing to hang an innocent man just to keep them. One question, Captain Cabot. Who comes after Yates? Who's next? How long will you let him feed his hatred into you? Eat into your minds until it destroys you like it has him. How long? <laughs> Words, man. It's just the babblings of a drunken old man who hasn't got the courage to face himself. Much less life. Now, I say that we've listened long enough. It's time to carry out what we came here to do. For myself, I've enjoyed our little trial. It showed Yates up for what he really is. Corporal Bellamy, Private Jordan, you'll carry out the sentence. Captain, this is a court martial. Remember, the prisoner is entitled to hear the verdict before sentence is carried out. You, Jordan. Mrs. Quintal. Oh, yes. Hate. It's hard to give up, isn't it? But you'll get something in return. You, you'll get your freedom from him. The verdict. Your verdict. Fools! Cowards! You let Yates go after what he did to you? Very well. I'll carry out the sentence myself. On whom, Captain? On whom will you pass sentence? Langford, stay out of this. Oh, no, Mr. Yates. This is our judgment day now, not yours. The accused has been found not guilty. So that leaves me, doesn't it, Captain? Langford, he said a trial, justice, truth. Let's see if he can stare it in the face. Your gun, Captain. Your war is over. First a boy, then a lawyer, then a judge, and finally a man. A man. I'm so sorry. Battle of Far Off, the Thunder of the Captains.
longest of my life. That uh, business in town, you get it straightened out? Oh, yeah, I'll straighten away. Any trouble? I'm back. in a graveyard. Whoa. Whoa. Senor, Wells Fargo. You know something, Senor Ari? I don't like this place. There is a feeling of death here. Oh, not again. Look, Jesus, be superstitious on your own time, will you? You get that wagon to load there. Oh, by the way, be sure you check those supplies over. If we get any weevils in that flower, Wishbone will bake you for bread. Credit here on Wells Fargo. Two hundred dollars. Right. You got that much? You got anything that says who you are? This you, Rowdy Yates? That's right. Be a minute. I got to open the safe. of a meal for three men? Well, depends on how reckless they're feeling, but I'll see what we got. Keep your voice down, your hand away from the gun, turn around. Talking to me? That's right, Ramrod. I liked you better when you were singing. Put your money on the table. You're gonna have to work a longer day than this for it. I'd just as soon take it from a dead fool's pocket and put it on the table. Hey, Roddy! Hey, Susan! <laughs> Damn, will you? Alvin, you all right? I'm oh, just fine. Just leaking a little. 
You stay here. I'll get some water. I could have shot you in the back, cowboy. And no trouble. What do you want me to do? Say I'm sorry? Say it. Or not. You're gonna be sorry. You will. What'd you say you came to town for? Just supplies and some cash for trail expenses. And I put uh, business. Get him fixed up? Yeah, he ought to stay down for a couple of days. For this? Cheaper than a funeral. You know, I can't guarantee mortification won't set in. You're a cheerful fellow, aren't you? Well, you suit yourself. That'll be one dollar, please. Yeah, I'll get it. Thank you. All right, sign it. Yeah. Can I read it first? It's just all the stuff you said it was. John Day, that's his name. Could have been. It's the one he was using, anyhow. What do you mean? Didn't he live around here? Sometimes. Sometimes not. He's a rough boy. Not now. Here you are, Sheriff. I found a double eagle in his boot. It'll pay for the lumber and the labor and, and the winding cloth. You all ready? Yeah. I'll need two of you. All right. Up there. Oh, that's handy. The regular cemetery is down by the church. This is make do. For them, it's lacking in social standing. The ground is not blessed, senor. Well, they're lucky to have any place at all. Ah, oh, this is not good, senor. When the ground is not blessed, the dead cannot sleep. Well, I haven't had any complaints yet. That's it, unless you want to say something. Me? And you killed him. I will say a prayer for him. You win the turkey, Jesus. You do for a fact. It is best to have respect for the dead, senor. Yeah, I'll give him respect. There's some flowers for him. Now get on with it. Querido Dios, tenga piedad con su alma. Descanse en paz. En el Padre, Filio, Espíritu Santo. Amén. All right, cover him up. Hey, Sheriff, what's the quickest way down? Same way you came in. Go right over the hill if you didn't have that wagon. I'm too glad we have got the wagon. This fella. You have any family or anything? Him? Not that I know of. You have any friends? Are you nervous? I get kind of careful after I've been shot, Sheriff. Could be somebody'd make a try for you. You got anybody in mind? You ran with a rough crowd. Could be one of them might make it personal. Yeah. Oh, come on, we got a wagon to load. I'm getting mighty spooky, Mr. Favor. Yeah. 
about eight or ten things I'd rather do than head off a stampede tonight. Any night. Yeah, it'll be all right, as long as it doesn't hit any closer. Rowdy's coming in with the wagon. Well, that's nice. Who's your replacement? Well, that new fella. I'll send him up. Enjoy yourself? Yeah, we had a little delay. Three days, you call that a little delay? Well, Calhoun got shot. Oh. A fellow named John Day wanted to make a try for the money. I had to kill him. Oh, my mistake. The money. How's Calhoun? He seemed all right at first. But he seems to be too good right now. Trouble, My arm's kind of swollen up. Yeah. I want Wishbone to take a look at it. Jesus, help him down. Si, senor. Why don't you give a hand? I get my horse down the remuda. Yeah, oh, there's a new man down at the remuda line. Tell him he's due to relieve Quince. New man? Yeah, I hired him on this morning, name of Rivers. Works like a good one. Oh, that is. Rivers? Yes? You're due to relieve Jim Quince whenever you're ready. I'm ready right now. Mr. Ramrod. Drink it, Mr. Wishbone. Mighty well told you wasn't. Did it hurt real bad? Did you ever know anything that hurt real good? I wish. Hang on to that. How is it? At least a long way from good. I think it's mortifying. Do everything you can. Get some sleep. Yeah. Uh, look, the new man you hired, the one who calls himself Rivers? I mean, calls himself. Ain't that his name? I, I don't know. There's something I ought to know about him. You tell me. Well, what is it? Well, it... I don't know. Maybe nothing, but... I'd feel a lot better about it if you'd let him go. You want me to fire him? That's right. Got a reason? I'm asking you. That's reason enough. Sorry with the hood to move. I need every man I got in twice that. I know that, and I'm still asking you. Fair enough. Give me a good reason. Back in Elvis, uh, the man I killed, John Day. You had no other way to go. Don't let it ride you. Did I say I was letting it ride me? You don't have to. I can tell when you get that look. Look, when I looked at Rivers down at the Bermuda, I thought I was looking at John Day. You hear? Yeah, I heard. Well, maybe... Maybe it could be the same man. How long since you had your head down? I think I'm seeing things, don't you? Well, I think you're a little tired. I think you made a mistake. Well, Jesus is right there. He saw the same thing I did. You think he's tired, too? I'm afraid that's what I do think. A lot of people look alike. 
You see a man once in the firelight? Nothing we can do to hurt or help him now. Calhoun, I really am. Check him over, good. I'll be going back now. Oh, just a minute, Reversa. Uh, how'd you happen to be here? My horse threw a shoe. When I came back to the Remuda line, I heard a cry for help. When I got here, the man was dead. Why? Nothing, except... Uh... Except... Uh... Well, there's some concern about who you are. For a dollar a day, you do not get a pedigree. I signed on to herd cattle. I am herding cattle. If that doesn't suit you, I can be lashed up and gone in ten minutes. There's not a mark on him. Must have been the poison got to his heart. All right, Rivers, you can get on back to herd.
count. Still a couple of hundred heads shy. And it could be worse. Or if that lightning had ever touched off this grass, we'd have had as a real barbecue. You better go on and eat. We'll move out as soon as everybody's had chow. It's still got a little unfinished business, you know. About rivers? Yeah, about rivers. Well, I ain't gonna fire him, not for looking like somebody else. I don't know, but Woody isn't the same man. He's maybe a brother or something. All right, all right. Suppose this John Day does have a brother that's named Rivers, and he is out of looking for you. You really figure that firing him is gonna do any good? Where would you rather have him, here with the herd where you can keep an eye on him, or up in the hills where he can take a pot shot at you? Well, maybe you're right. Yeah, well, uh, during the year, I'm bound to hit one or two, right? Law of averages, you know. Yeah, I'll eat. Oh, howdy, there's something you ought to know. Calhoun's dead. What? How? It was the poison in him. Hit his heart, that's all. You sure? Wishbone looked him over real good. Outside of his shoulder, torn a mark on him. Hey, Beck! Huh? Turn that, boss. Farmer back here found some of our beeves. Well, all right. You go on and eat. Mr. Favor? Mr. Mayhew. Mr. Mayhew, good Howdy. favor. I'm much obliged, sir. It's all right. Listen, let's uh, gather them up with a herd, and then we'll go into camp. Mr. Ramrod. Rivers? Yes, Mr. Ramrod. Who are you? Why, you just call me my name? Rivers. A good way to remember it is think of something you have yet to cross. <laughs> Towel morning to serve you fellas breakfast. No cornbread this morning? No, no cornbread. No Christmas pudding neither. When have I had any time to do any baking? Hey, Wishbone. I hear you was out chasing cattle last night. Well, I wasn't letting them stampede like some I know that calls themselves drovers. Oh, now don't you bet I me, Wishbone. I'll climb out of this saddle and get you. Yeah, why don't you climb out of that saddle? Your brain needs some rest. Yeah, come on, come on. You look real good in an iron hat. Oh, you little weasel, I was only joking with you. How's good? Well, get in line to find out. Well, she put aside a good plate of leftovers for Mr. Quince. Here, you step right up here. I got a nice extra piece of ham in there for you. Same for you, Toothless. Leaf flies are scrambled. Here they are, Roddy. Just gonna be lucky if I have anything left for you. Senor Roddy. Yeah, what is it, is it? Senor. Remuda just now. I saw him again. El Muerto. He looked at me and smiled, and I felt the hand of death in my heart. Okay, so you say El Muerto, death walking around. There is no such thing. There can't be. But there is, senor. I know such things, even in my own village. I told you, the dead do not sleep in ground that is not blessed. Would be one answer. He's got to be Day's brother. But. Even the clothes I like, senor. I clothes like that in any town. So I'm the one he's after, Jesus. You're in the clear. You don't have a thing to worry about. You didn't kill Day. Neither did senor Calhoun. And he is dead. Yeah, blood poisoning. 
Rivers is just like any other man. You cut him, he's gonna bleed. Ruddy, this is Sam Mayhew. He's good enough to bring back some of our steers. This is Ruddy Yates a ramrod. Howdy. I see you. I uh, happen to mention John Day to Mr. Mayhew. He knew him. Oh, yeah? Well, I know his pawn mall better. They had a place near mine down at the Bitter Root. That was before the war. And you don't have anything to worry about anymore as far as John Day's brother's concerned. Well, how do you mean? He didn't have a brother. Now, there was another boy. Uh, his twin, as a matter of fact, but he died. You sure about this? Yes, sir. He, he got himself hurt pretty bad in a shooting fight, but near blowed his arm off. He made his way home somehow and died a day or two later, but I saw him in his coffin. I helped put him in his grave, so I'm one to be sure. I say, Wishbone's burning some eggs over there. You interested? I'm always interested where there's food. Thanks again. Think nothing of it. Well, I guess you can sleep with both eyes shut tight now. If there's only one thing about it. What? If Rivers isn't Day's brother, then who is he? Two men who look alike. A coincidence, that's all. Either that or I hired on a spook. Is that what you think? I don't know what I think. He said I'd fry up a couple eggs. Well, if you want any eggs, you can tell him he can cook them. Well, spread as big as this looked like they could spare a couple of eggs. We're not herding chickens, mister. We're herding bees. Now, just move along. What? Uh, Wishbone, got a couple of eggs for me? Right away, Mr. Favor. Me and my friend. <laughs> and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone that believeth in me shall not die forever. Lord, have mercy on his soul. Amen. Jesus, wait a minute. to the grave when we your sweating mr ramrod standing in the cold air sweating what's the matter your conscience bothering you about what how would i know who are you? I told you before. Rivers. Yeah, something I got across, that right? That's right. Yeah, well, maybe I'm ready to cross that right now. No, senor, already no. I like your style, Mr. Ramrod. For a man that's sweating, you stand pretty firm. I'm almost going to be sorry to take you. You ain't gonna take me just standing there talking about it. I'm not going to take you at all. Not now. Maybe you ain't gonna have no choice about that, Rivers. When the time comes, you'll die. Meanwhile, just sweat like you're doing. You ain't going nowhere. Sit there, Roddy. You get that? Don't push it, Mr. Ramrod. Senor Calhoun, then me, now, 
there is only you. Kind of private, aren't you? Hey, Sue's come to you. Oh, same. Still unconscious. What do you expect got into him running off like that? Let me get tired of your cooking. Hmm. Looks like he's not the only one. I wasn't hungry. That all right with you? You can starve to death for all I care. What's bothering me, Wishbone? No, it's Jesus being hurt and Calhoun, the way he died and all. Well, that's just the way it is out here. Men die. Of course, I know we'd be a lot better off and live a lot longer if we was holed up in some nice little town with a nicey, nice little job and eating our porridge and drinking our tea and hiding under the bed when the wind comes up. But we're not. We're drovers. And there's dying mixed up in it. If we can't face that, we'll, we just shouldn't ought to be drovers. Mr. Wishbone! Mr. Wishbone! Hey, Susie, he's coming, too. Well, it's about time we had some good news. Take it easy now, Jesus. Senor, please. My apology. Hey, do like Wishbone says, take it easy. Ain't nothing to apologize for. You're gonna be all right. Sure you are. Must you bring us some of that broth over there? A little broth on you, you'd be fine. Oh, I am a foolish man. What was the idea, anyway? I, I was trying to run away, senor. The faster you run from this, the quicker it catches you. Here, now. Take a little of this and do you good. No. Gracias, senor Wishbone. When death is waiting, one does not escape it with a cup full of broth. Usually when a man comes out of a thing like this, that's it. He's better, but I don't know.
to. Well, my gun, what's it look like? He's a man as smart as you, Mr. Favor, could see that. Mm hmm? Well, what are you going to do with that thing? Go out and uh, win the West? I had a little talk with Redford, that's all. You mean to tell me you still think he's Day's brother? I don't know who he is, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to have a little talk with him. Why you? Well, because Calhoun's dead, and Jesus the way he is, the spinning wheels is turning to me, that's all. I still can't figure out why you got to turn gunfighter all of a sudden. A gunfighter, ramrod, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to face up to him. Not on my drive. On your drive or off of it. Now look for the last time... <laughs> For you, Mr. Ramrod. I'm sick of you around here. I'm sick of the way you make me feel. I told you it would happen when it happens. You can't push it. I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it right now. <laughs> Just have to wait. I said right now. You barehanded and me like this, you'd like that little advantage, wouldn't you, Mr. Ramrod? You take that glove off. No. Someday. Someday, but not now. Well, right talk. Couldn't even draw a gun. Why? What'd you want? I wanted you to think and wait until you got so tired of waiting that you'd draw your gun and pull the trigger. You kill somebody that can't draw back and they'll hang you for it, Mr. Ramrod, with a rope around the neck with a lawman to spring the trap. You ask what I wanted? You, twisting on the end of a rope. That's what I wanted. Who are you, anyway? Well, three times asking, rates a true answer. Day is the name. Jim Day, the man you killed, was my brother. Your brother? Married, born, and raised together. I guess you hadn't heard of me. Uh, we heard of you. We heard you were dead. <laughs> and so I was, Mr. Favor. For five long years, dead and buried. What are you talking about? The night I got this half blown off, a man got killed, a man with a badge. I didn't do it, but I was there. I knew they'd be looking for me hard. We figured the only sure way to call off the dogs was if I was dead and buried, and that's what they did, my pa and John. <laughs> They put me in a box, asked the neighbors in for a quick look by candlelight, with me just as pale as wax, as still as death. And they put the lid on the box, and they carried me out, and they buried me. a sound to hear, friend. Dirt hitting your coffin top. Once you hear that sound, nothing in this world ever sounds the same. They buried me shallow, they dug me up quick, 
As soon as the neighbors left, I left immediately after. On the books, I was dead. And I'll tell you something funny. I felt dead. Five long years on the move, mister. And every hour of every day of that time, I felt like a dead man. I missed him. I mean, my brother. Last month, I got a letter saying to meet him in Alvis. We were gonna go out west together to Oregon County. You know what that meant? It meant, it meant I had a chance to come alive again. And you know what it meant to me? To get there and find him shot dead. His brother had a gun on me. So I read, Mr. Ramrod. So I read in the sheriff's office. And that's when I knew that if there was gonna be any justice at all, I'd have to make it myself. One hand against two. I still might have gotten you somehow. But I wanted something more. I wanted you to hang for killing me. You really think you could get me to draw on you? I figured you might. If you were half scared to death. <laughs> That's what I set out to do. My brother's clothes. What I learned from asking questions. A song. Some flowers. They believed your story, Mr. Ramrod, the sheriff. The rest of them. But we know better, don't we? Story I told them, that's what happened. The way you told it was a lie! You killed my brother! And no one has the right or wrong of it! Someone got themselves killed, they said. Who was it? John Day? He was a hard enough case. Chances are he had it coming. You say he tried to rob you, friend? We'll put it down like you said, and good riddance to him. Dig him a hole up on the hill with a stray cats and dogs and throw him a handful of sunflowers as a joke. Cover him up and forget him. Well, it's not that easy, Mr. Ramrod. It's not that easy. <laughs> Ghost, Jesus. Cut him and he bleeds like any other man. Let him go. This kind of hate can only hurt himself. Yeah, he's all right. Good. 
Say, uh, you know, boss, I'm really sorry about last night. Yeah, let's, let's not make a habit of that, huh? <laughs> you know, all I can say is that uh, ever since I saw Rivers that night, I just ain't been thinking too clear, that's all. Forget it. You know, he said something about uh, being scared half to death. He was right. Even when I was calling him, I was half scared to death. Is that what's troubling you? Well, wouldn't it you? You stood up, didn't you? You don't seem to realize. To stand up when you're half scared to death. That's the only time it counts. I heard the move. What's that? Sounds like a puma. Don't know what else it could be. Think he's heading for the herd? That's what I aim to find out. Now, you stay put, you hear? It's your favor ain't gonna like us being late.
Soon now, Shonaka. Soon. How is it? Ah, just a little sprain. How's it feel? <laughs> Less said about his head, the better. Take over on Ramrod until Roddy gets back. On Button, I'm going to scout. Yeah, about time I had some easy 11. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that hunter? Down at the creek. Said he didn't want any doctoring. He said he didn't want you messing with him, is what he said. That shows a lot of horse sense. Horse sense? Since when did you ever see a hunter with any horse sense? If they had any horse sense, there wouldn't be a hunter. Just goes to show you what. Your name was Carlock, didn't you? That's right. Well, we're much obliged to you. Obliged for what? <laughs> him. He isn't worth much, but we kind of got used to him. You don't owe me a thing. I sure am grateful you happened along up there, Mr. Carlock. I didn't just happen along. I was tracking that animal. Well, tell me, Carlock, uh, just what kind of a puma was that, anyway? It didn't sound like anything I'd ever heard before. Ain't no kind of a puma at all. It's a lion. African lion. Say, come to think of it, I saw a giraffe last week. I'd have mentioned it, but didn't think it was important. <laughs> Is that your way of saying I'm a liar? Are you? If you lived around here, you'd know better. So what I said it was, African lion. Oh, come. Well, he was taking it by train up to Elitch Gardens up in Denver. Piled up up above Nine Mile Grade, and got loose. Loose ever since. Four or five years. Paiutes call it Shonaka. Say that any man who goes after it's dead before he starts. You lucky boy. Real lucky. A lion. Well, that's all we needed. There it is. Just letting you know it's out there. At least now he sounds quite a ways off. I double up the night guard? I just did. I was lucky, too. Was it uh, that same cat? Shonak. Put its mark on me. I put mine on it four years ago. Four years? And the people don't own the cat. They wanted it back alive. Seeing it was tame, trained, they put up a bounty. I did my tracking. I sprung my trap. 
Guess I got it by the foot. Went crazy, chewed itself loose. Turned killer. Man killer. Since then, it's been kind of personal between us. You mean tell me you've been hunting that same lion for four years? Not steady, just off and on. I work around here and there most every place. These uh, scars I never did rightly heal. Something about the nerves. Every once in a while I get to acting up. They itch. And I start thinking about that cat out there. Back I come. How's that gun feel? I'll live. You, uh, think you'd be able to work? Why? Well, short-handed. A ramrod has half the men over at Talbot picking up another 500 head. I ain't no drover. What I had in mind was a hunter. All right. But I hunt my way. How's that? I don't need a yearling out of your herd. When? Almost any time. Quince, get him out of yearling. And I want that herd kept tight. Real tight, here. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I uh, can spare you a couple of men, being as his night. I hunt alone. Wouldn't it be better to catch him in the crossfire? No crossfire is going to catch Shonaka. Take more than that. A lot more than that. Bumblefooted knucklehead forgot to give you the mail. It's been hurting all, Mr. Payer. It plain slipped my mind. Well, now, that's all right, Mushy. We're plumb even up. I forgot to ask you for it, didn't I? That's right. Anybody interested in mail? Mail! Hey, mail! Oh. All right, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Scarlet! Here, pass it back to Joe. Barton. Wishbone. Me. Me again. Calloway. Calloway again. And Mushy. Mushy! You call me Mr. Favor? I got a letter for you. For me? We got another Harkness Mushgrove the Third in the outfit. Here. Well, come on, take it. You want it? If you don't want it, Mushy, I'll take it. Mr. Toothless, it's mine. Where are your manners, Mush? Don't you know you're supposed to say, please? <laughs> Mr. Toothless, give me my letter. Mr. Hey, Toothless. Hey, get it down. Hey. Quick, get out of there. Hey, Toothless, over here. Obliged, Mr. Carlock.
What you doing, Mushy? Thinking? That's right, Mr. Wishbone. You know what I've been thinking? Yep. You do? I sure do. You've been sitting there thinking about quitting the drive. How'd you know? Because it happens every time they poke fun at you. It follows like the grass after rain. This time I've been thinking serious about quitting the drive. I'm tired of having people play jokes on me. And I'm tired of being called a, a fumble-headed knucklefoot. That's a fumble-footed knucklehead, you idiot. Anyway, you're not, really. Then how come everybody's always making sport of me? That's because they like you. And you'd know that if you wasn't such a fumble-footed knucklehead. But you just said... Now, no buts about it, Mushy. You're not quitting the drive, and that's that. That's downright silly. Where would you quit to? What would you do? Lots of things. Name one. I could be a hunter. I could get me a dog and go up in the hills, maybe. And hunt and get along just fine. Oh, hunter, haven't you got that knocked out of your head yet? Anyway, how could you be a hunter? Look at all of that gear. Why, well, there, a horse, extra saddlebags, an extra rifle. You couldn't even get started on less than $100 cash. Well, maybe I got $100. Since when? Since my letter, that's when. Now, Mushy, you know very well that's a plain, outright, bare-faced... All right. All right. We'll just find out about that. Mr. Carlock. You saw that letter Mushy got, didn't you? What about it? Did you see anything of a hundred dollars in it? Could have been a hundred dollars. Could have been more. You sure? I'm always sure. You see there? All right, go ahead and be a hunter. Shoot your foot off for all I care. He certainly put his spoke in his wheel. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be mighty proud to help you here, Mr. Carla. I got that yearling cut out for you, Carlick. He's down by the Ramuda line. Right. What do you say they call that thing? Shonaka. Paiute for death dancer. Death dancer? Say it dances over a kill like a Paiute shaman at a burial. Say it's not even a cat. Say it's an evil spirit. Evil spirit? There's no such thing, is there? Wouldn't know about that. And I'll tell you this. You hunt that cat long enough and you start to wonder. Wait. Get back and find out what's out in the car. Lock. I'll hold down your bike for you. Will do. to help you. Why? I don't know. Pay you back, maybe. You done something for me about that letter. Well, not for you. Let's hold you up, Carlock. The herd's getting hard to hold. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna get down there right away. Down? Down where? Well, I figured to set up about a quarter mile south of the herd. Yeah, but that cat's upwind to the north. Yeah, I know. Look here. There's Bass. There's your herd, right there. Cat's up here, upwind. Let me know it's up there. I'm gonna split out a couple of strays. He's gonna go down around here, make his kill from downwind. That's where I'm gonna be. My little friend there. First thing that cat sees. That's fine, but uh, 
Just how do you know that cat's going to do that? Because that's what I'd do. If it wouldn't be too much trouble, almighty hunter, would you get at those dishes? No, sir. Well, 28 more ahead, slice of strays. Find any dead beef? Not a one. Funny, too, the way they were scattered. I wonder why that cat didn't hit him. Yeah, funny. Well, you can ask him next time you come across him. Right now, you better hurry up and eat. I'm pulling out in 10 minutes. Sleep at all? Uh -huh. Why don't you crawl in the supply wagon? Maybe and pick up a couple hours anyhow. Yeah, I don't sleep now. I'm too close. I'm feeling it's almost finished. One way or the other. Suit yourself.
here. What's that for? To wear. I'm a fair hand at mending. I thought I could fix that sleeve for you. Oh, all right. Does that belong to somebody? Oh, it's a spare one. Anybody needs it. I can make that sleeve as good as new for you. What is it? What's what, Mr. Carla? What do you want? Nothing, honest. There's just one little thing. I'd sure admire going hunting with you. Why? Well, to show some of these folks around here. They think I'm a big joke anyhow. I hunt alone. Better get started, Barton. After last night, we're gonna need a downhill train. Look, Billy. Keep your eyes open out there now, you hear? Just like they was propped open with toothpicks, Jim. some shovels. Looks like you got done to make coffee. coat. It's got his scent on it. How's that cat know it wasn't Carlick he killed? You think he was stalking on me? Well, don't you? I don't know. I claim Billy got killed because he had your coat on. 
<laughs> Billy got killed because he got careless. Listen, boss. That's enough foolishness. Come well, on, we better get mush your hand. Think maybe Jim's right. What about this? I don't know. Say we can get rid of it. I think you're right. Joe. Second I time it's happened. Yeah, I know that. And the stampede. Well, we all feel the same way about it. Let's go have a little talk. Mr. Saver, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure. What's on your mind? Garlic, we want you to get rid of it. cat's after him. I'll go along with you on that. You will? Yeah, sure. He's after Carla, you, me, and anything else that breathes. He's a rogue, a killer. The only thing that's killed is Billy, and I still claim it's on account of Carlick's coat. Now, Jim, we had a little talk about that, so if that's all you got to say. No, sir. There's more. All right, go ahead. What about that stampede? Not one dead steer. That cat was right in the thick of it. You know who almost did get killed, though? You bet it was Carlock there. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Are you trying to tell me that that cat started that stampede to kill Carlock? I ain't trying to tell you nothing, boss, but it's mighty funny that every time that cat makes a move, it moves right towards old Carlock. Stands to reason. They got it in for each other. Well, let me tell you what I think about cats. I think they're just animals. I don't think they're like people sitting around Figuring out feuds or plotting revenge. Maybe that's right, and maybe it isn't. But look what's happened. Billy's dead, Mushy got hurt. We've got a stampede. Now, what else has to happen for them to settle it once and for all? Get rid of him, boss. You know, I did sign him on for a reason. I'm short-handed. I need a hunter. We'll hunt. We'll do anything. We'll pull double shifts. Double shifts on your own? You all agreed to that? Right. right. Good luck. You didn't decide on wages last night. You don't have to pay me to hunt that cat. Oh, I heard you. I'll pay you. Dollar a day, just like the drovers. If that sounds fair to you, that'll be the end of it. What do you mean? I'll uh, draw on your time. Won't be needing you anymore. Kind of them? Oh, I do my own hiring and firing, but uh, if they're willing to stand extra watches on their own time, I gotta go along with that. Yeah. How you can pay me in the morning? Oh, he won't be here in the morning. You want me to clear camp tonight? That's it. Look, it's like I told you. This thing's coming to a head tonight. That, that cat's moving in a pattern around this herd. I think I got it figured out. I don't very often feel called on to say please to a man, but I'm saying it now. Please, I, I need one more night with that herd. Just, just till sun up. Carl, it ain't nothing personal. It's, it's just you're not a man to fit in with a driver. Which is a better way to say it. Now, don't you think I know what I've become? A man don't hunt one cat for four years without something happening to him. Used to be a soldier. Troop sergeant. You like hunting better? What I like don't come into it. I was stationed down at Sundance. Met a girl, half-breeding. 
part Paiute. Willow was her name. Suited her just fine. I don't know how it is where you come from, but down there, well, being married to a half-breed, they don't take too kindly to it. I should have stuck it out, I guess. I know I should have now. Shames me that it didn't. But I let him run me out of the army. Willow and I, we uh, come up here and did a little farming, raised some stock. We make it out just fine. And then that cat busted loose, and I went after the bounty. Set my traps like I told you. I come up to see, and it got me pretty bad. I managed to make it home. Cap got there first. I found Willow. He's by the well. And that's why I hunted. The Death Dancer. You got to send up. It's all the time I'll need. Do some company? You sure, Mr. Carly? Why don't you sit down? Hmm. What's wrong, Mr. Carly? Said something about wanting to hunt. Yes, sir. Want to hunt with me? You mean permanent? Why not? You're not joking me, are you? I'm not much of a joker. You mean you're a real hunter? Where do I tell me? What's the matter? Well, when would you think of starting? Right away. Right. Cat. Maybe you and I could do it together. Just made a mistake. Mistake? Yeah, I didn't think you'd scare that easy. Any time, Mr. Carlock. At least ways I don't think so. What then? I don't know. I've been thinking about quitting a herd. Comes right down to it, I don't know. It's your choice. Tub of soap or live like a man. I sure do appreciate the offer, Mr. Carlin. I have to think about it a while. Maybe talk it over to somebody. I'll be going out at moonrise. You got to then to make up your mind. Yes, sir. you see I'm busy? It's important, Mr. Whisper. Oh, all right, deal me out. All right, what's so important? Well, I wanted to talk to you. Well, talk. It's about leaving the herd, Mr. Whisper. So you finally made up your mind. Well, I flat out decided, Jack. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, I see. You haven't decided yet. So you want me to tell you how much everybody likes you and what a good job you're doing and then end up by getting down on my knees to you? I ain't done at all, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Carlock asked me to be his partner. Oh, mushy. You think I was born last Tuesday? No. Well, you got your last rise out of me. Mr. Wishbone. Uh, I wouldn't be leaving the herd if... If you needed me. Oh, you wouldn't want to leave if we needed you. No, sir. Well, then you just go right ahead and don't worry about us. We'll get along somehow. You mean you don't care if I go? 
I don't care if you sprout pin feathers and fly away. Now, you just hollered wolf once too often. You want to quit? You quit. All right, then, I will. What was that all about? No, oh, nothing. Unless you just want a little sympathy. Well, it's time he learned a lesson. Whose deal is it? It's mine. Anytime you are. Here, I need this. So, Henry, where the, where the fellow see me go through camp with this? Uh, I think we better go out this way. After we get that cat and come back, that will show him. Sure, Mr. Carlock. There's a the place. Here, put that on. Yes, sir. Mr. Carlock, this is your coat. Huh? What about it? I heard Mr. Quinn say something about this coat. He said that cat went after it. You still don't know when they're joking you, do you, Marshy? Not too bright, Mr. Carlock. I can get better, you see. Oh, uh, keep your sights on that water hole. Yes, sir. Where you be? Don't worry. Goodbye. Much obliged, Mr. Carly. How's the coffee? Like it always is. Uh, that's too bad. Uh, what? Is that some coffee, huh? Do you want to have it bean by bean, or you want to wait till I find the coffee grinder? Can you tell me how one loses a coffee grinder? I didn't lose a coffee grinder. I just can't find where that knucklehead mushy put it. I got an idea. Why don't you ask him? Because I wouldn't give him the satisfaction, that's why. I think he went off someplace, boss. You think he went off someplace? Off someplace where? I don't know. Him and that hunter, they took off south. I thought you knew about it. You thought I knew about it. Which bomb? This is I hear about Mushy going off with the hunter. He said he was going to, but I didn't believe him. Oh, you don't think... I don't think anything anymore. Well, neither do I, boss, but uh, I'd sure give a lot to know who's wearing Carlock's range coat right now. Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. Well, where is he, then? You heard it himself. He said he hunts alone. Going south, huh? 
All right, let's go. Did. You think Shonaka killed my wife? It was me. I killed her when I let him rent me out of the army. Brought her out here to live. That cat uh, just took my shame out on it. Well, we... well, he got what he was hunting for anyway. Maybe. I hope so. Because it wasn't the cat he was after. I told you to clear that tailgate. Yes, sir. Now! Well, why don't you get up? I guess because I'm a fumble-headed knucklefoot. No, you're not, but you'll sure do the one comes along. I appreciate that, Mr. Wishbone. I think. Just clear it up. And don't hide the coffee grinder. Elbow's been aching all morning. Something in the wind, I can feel it. 
His ducks, look at them. Those aren't ducks, Mussy. They're geese. Can't be geese. They don't get together this time of the year. Well, they're geese. Can't you hear them honking? Look at them swarm. Yet, but I ate so much dust, I'm due for a bellyache. It's a good thing you scared it. The storm would have ripped right through the metal. It'll be a week gathering them up. You can tally up our losses then. Uh, you know what's got to be done. Find yourselves a horse. Get to it. Well, what are you doing now? I'm looking for my head. Well, it's on the way to Kansas. Come on and help me, or you'll be looking for a job. Well, you know, I think Mr. Faber ought to settle for what we rounded up and get this herd of moving. Well... Still a hundred short, though, with that 40 dead. That's kind of a stiff loss. Yeah, but we've been after it for three days now, and time's going to start costing you nothing but money. That's our brand, all right. I guess the ride wasn't a total loss after all. Hey, mister! Would you give me a lift down? Thanks, Jim. You sure ain't no squirrel. What are you doing up there, boy? The cows chase me.
your turn, Jim. Come on. Cows are shooting me. Well, we're a lot meaner. You'll be all right now. Sort of an old-timey tree climbing convention? Oh, no. We live there. Mr. Smithers told us to watch the cows. He sent Johnny and Pedro out to see if there's any more. Oh, well, that's real nice of Mr. Smithers. Uh, we just came to get the cows. Well, if you want to buy them, you'll have to talk to Mr. Smithers. I don't know what he sold the others for. Sold the others? I mean, he's been selling this beef here? You never seen nothing like it, mister. Ever since that tornado, they've been coming out of the hills from every which direction. Oh, boy. Well, you want to flip to see who goes back? Oh, no. You're the ramrod. That's your job. You go get it. Me now, I'll just stay here at the house and keep an eye on these little fellas. Gentlemen, Edgar Allen Smithers at your service. Your favorite, Roddy Yates, Jim Quince. Oh, cattlemen, I can see. Oh, I admire you. It must be a very challenging life, rounding up all those wild cows and driving them clean across the continent. Well, they all ain't exactly wild, Mr. Smithers. Now, your daughter Betsy was telling me that... No, 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 no. no not my daughter, my niece. As for the others, I'm afraid I can't identify their antecedents. They're orphans. This is an orphanage, huh? Well, I'm afraid it doesn't look like much, but... as I always say, it's what's inside that counts. Oh, I must admit that the hand of Providence does man the helm of our ship of life sometimes. Mr. Smithers! It fits! It fits me perfect! Perfectly! Now, you go inside. There's some more packages for you. As I was saying, Providence. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Now, you take that tornado last week. Oh, we took it all right. Oh, why? Well, I know it must have brought havoc for some. But to those whose ship was foundering on the pinnacle of privation, well, indeed, sir, it was truly a blessing. Sort of like cows from heaven, huh? That's a fitting way of putting it. Very fitting way indeed. You know, this is just like Christmas to those children. Christmas that's long overdue. And all because of money derived from the sale of a few stray cows. Mr. Smithers! Look, they don't fit. Oh, excuse me. Well, now, maybe we can have Betsy let them down a little bit, or... Oh, we can cut them off right at the knees. Me pants are for girls. Oh. Well, now, Kevin, you have two alternatives. Either we'll let your hair grow, <laughs> or... Or you can run inside and change your pants, because we can have them exchanged. <laughs> Besides from the presents, I had enough money left over to buy some furniture, chairs and beds. $300 can go a long, long way. Three hundred dollars? 
That's what you sold the beef for. Yes, indeedy. Mr. Randolph wanted to pay $2 a head, but uh, I stuck to three. And by sheer tenacity, I got it. Sheer tenacity? Oh, you drive a hard bargain. Exactly who is this Mr. Randolph? Oh, he runs the bank in Cedar Springs. Oh, now, look, if you intend to do business with him, be very careful. He is a wily one. Oh, I sort of gathered that already. Tell me, uh, did he ask for a bill of sale or papers of ownership? Oh, well, I signed a lot of papers, transferals and the like. Routine, I guess, for business. Well, we better catch up this fellow before he sells him to somebody else, huh? Well, don't let him hike the price beyond five. You know what he paid for them. Thanks a lot for telling us. You've been a real big help. Oh, uh, uh, and incidentally, those uh, the cows over here in the meadow, uh, would you like to buy them? I was going to keep a few around, but they're a little too rambunctious for the children. Uh, yeah, look, how about uh, $30? Does that sound fair? Oh, that, uh, that is more than fair. That is very generous. Oh, gee, thank you very much. Think nothing of it. Uh, uh, you want me to sign a receipt or anything? Who needs ownership papers? Uh -huh. Mr. Smithers, come and look at Mary. She's just beautiful. Oh, coming, coming. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Nice doing business with you. Well, a pleasure, Mr. Faber, Mr. Yates, and Mr. Andrews. Good afternoon, Sheriff. This must be important business. Uh, Mr. Randolph, I understand you bought a hundred head of cattle from Mr. Edgar Smithers. Oh, I surely did. And a profitable transaction. But illegal. That's right. Those cattle belong to me. Is my duly registered trail brand? Ownership papers? Brand registration papers. The brand's pretty commonly known, Mr. Randolph. Mr. Smithers assured me that those cattle were strays, that they belonged to him. I'm sure Mr. Smithers believed that. Uh, you don't know the front of the steer from the back. But you, as a uh, dealer in cattle, I'm certain that you would question his title to branded steers. Well, I... Uh, I never even inspected that beef, gentlemen. I, uh, I found Mr. Smithers to be about as honorable a man as I've ever dealt with. I give him credit here to feed those children. Well, when he said he had that cattle, I, uh, I bought them sight unseen. That's too bad. You'll just have to work out some means of recouping your $300 from him. Where have you got them corralled? Corral? What? I, I sold them on the day of purchase. Matter of fact, I, uh, I have the papers right here. They're all uh, properly drawn and uh, executed by Mr. Smithers. Drew these papers up yourself? Well, naturally. I wasn't about to buy something I couldn't sell legally. Certainly not stolen property. Well, who would you sell the stairs to? Well, I, uh, I'm afraid that that is my, uh, my personal business, sir. Don't matter. These are good enough for any legitimate dealer. <sighs> Mr. Smithers, a good Samaritan. Naive, yes, but uh, how much of a loss will this represent, Mr. Faber? Well, who says we're taking a loss yet? Well, the only recourse you have is with Mr. Smithers, and that that poor bumbling fellow is penniless. Of course, I suppose you could throw him in jail, but... But the kids. There's still the Cattlemen's Association. Now, if you think those scraps of paper are going to Rowdy, 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 no need for that. This gentleman here has obviously acted in good faith. Huh? It's just a matter of being taken in by a tornado and a fool what believes in Santa Claus. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for being a little upset, Mr. Randolph. That beef would have brought me $4,000 in Denver. Oh, that is a heavy loss, Mr. Faber. Oh, well, all the averages, I guess, can't win them all. Oh, by the way, uh, how much did you make on the transaction? Well, I made uh, 2700 clear. Well, whoever bought him sure knew what he was up to. Yes, well, I suppose there's no harm in my telling you. It happens to be a very respectable broker named Frank Travis. 
Travers, yeah? Good man. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that it had to be at your expense, Mr. Favor. Never fear. I'll just take it out on someone else next time. You ain't gonna let him get away with this, are you? Look, you can stay here and sue Smithers if you want to. Me, I got her to take care of. Hey. Oh, uh, Mr. Yates. I really think it would be fruitless to pursue this matter any further with Mr. Smithers. After all, I know. The orphans. Sheriff, because I was so tickled to find out that you finally got taken. Thanks for picking him up, Sheriff. Ready? Biggest thief in Texas, Frank Travis. Look here, Gil. I knew that was your beef, but uh, I figured you sold it for trail cash. Not my beef, Frank. Owner's beef, and they expect to get cash for it. Four thousand dollars worth of cash. Ooh, you got a little problem. Well, here's my picture. I bought about seven to eight hundred head at about thirty dollars. And I'm moving them up to the mining country to pick up 35 to 37 ahead. But I could go bust just as easy. So I'll give you a beef back to you for what I paid for. Hmm. That's fine. Only what do we get $3,000? From the man with stole it, I hope. Sheriff, uh, do you agree that Randolph knew exactly what he was doing? No doubt about it. I could go on and say that he'd taken every man in the country at one time or another. Trouble is, he's got a whole satchel full of papers to hide behind. Well, if uh, you wouldn't mind looking the other way for a little bit, I might be able to feed him some of his own medicine. Well, if I'm going to be blind in one eye, I sure don't want to hear the details. It's like a small man with a real feel for justice. Hey, when are you pulling out, Frank? Tomorrow morning. No, oh, too soon, too soon. Can you give me four or five days? Mm, 48 hours, that's the outside. I don't get it. I'm not expected to get it. All you gotta do is deliver this to bank and do like you was told. Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, that's a sizable draft. As for provisions, we're moving out. Mr. Yates, I, uh... I couldn't help but uh, sense your animosity this afternoon. I want you to know that I'm... I'm only a businessman. Yeah. Well, it, uh... It wasn't the cattle we lost to Smithers that hurt so much. It's that other 200 head. Ah, tornadoes. 300 altogether? Oh, my, that's a, that's a tremendous speeding for you to be taking. Yeah, well, that's what I told Mr. Favor, but he's the boss and gives the orders. So we just write it off. Uh, do you have uh, any idea where those strays wandered off to? Uh, we did, we'd be out rounding them up. I suppose that storm dropped them about 50 counties west of here. No, no, no. Lightning could never strike twice in the same place. Still, Clarence, uh, the next time you see Mr. Smithers, would you tell him that I'm uh, still in the market for stray cows? You never can tell. With him, it could happen. mean to tell me that those little farmers didn't even know they were stealing. No, I wish they... They just looked at it like it was... Well, finders keepers, you know, and so did the Smithers. Well, a man like that, I can understand, but not a kid. No, sir, every one of them's a born rustler, and mighty few of them ever outgrow it. Most of the kids I've ever known ought to be froze stiff time they could walk and thawed out with caution after 20. Uh, 
everybody. Take everybody here and go out and cut out 200 head. I'm ready to move at first light. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Wishbone. I got a special job for you and Mushy. How do you come to the right man, Mr. Favor? Anytime you want anything done right, you just ask me. Of all the big mouth gravel headed nitwits, why didn't you stop me? Or better yet, why didn't I save my money? That way I could have bought back those cows and we wouldn't have to be here. Talk about tornadoes. Time this one's over, you'll wish that one last week and carried you off. Keep your gun handy. Evening, miss. We'd like to see Mr. Smithers. Come on in. I'll get him. There's my head. Later, you idiot. You stay here. I'm gonna do the talking. Evening. You gentlemen waiting? Uh, oh, it's uh, fast time. Uh, my name is uh, George W. Haggerty, and this is my friend H. Mushgrove Watson. Pleasure. Uh, my, what a handsome group of children. Tell Uncle George, what's your name? You put me down, you billy goat! Um, billy goat? That is a nasty way to treat our guests, treating them in such a shabbily manner. Now, you... you Everybody, into bed. Get ready for your bath. Be nimble. Otherwise, I'll have to, uh, take uh, drastic measures. I, I must prefer my apologies, Mr. Haggerty. Not at all, Mr. Smithers. Children will be children. Lord love them. As a matter of fact, that's one reason we came here. We heard you run an orphanage and thought maybe you could use some help. Well, a man in my position could use help, but, uh... You see, Mushgrove and I was both raised in Foundland homes. Oh, not really. Yeah. Oh, that's music to my ears. <laughs> Don't that take you back? Oh, it sure does, Mr. Haggerty. Well, I, uh, I could use the help, but I'm afraid I couldn't afford, uh... Mr. Smithers, you're looking at two road-weary, lonesome travelers just looking for a place like home we can hang our hats for a spell. We'd even work for our keep. Oh, I, I, I couldn't ask you gentlemen to do that. Mr. Smithers, we're asking you. Why, Mushgrove and me, we cook, do laundry, and, well, we certainly do love children. Well, uh, my goodness, that's certainly lively tonight, aren't they? And it isn't as if we didn't have experience. Why, there just isn't anything we can't do for kids. I could use the help. <laughs> then it's all settled. Settled it is. Uh, you can uh, bunk in the back and... Uh, well, here, you might just as well start on their baths. And if you don't mind, I, uh, I have quite a little sewing to do. This saves a lot of... You know, it, it's a blessing is what it is. said bath, and you're going to get a bath. You and that bean shooter. Now take off those clothes. You me! And the black knight thrust his faithful sword into the dragon's heart. Mortally stricken, the fierce giant fell, roaring his fury and breathing the flames of inferno into the heavens. Then he was dead. One last mighty bellow, and the terrible dragon was no more. The black knight put the princess on his horse, and they drove away into the setting sun to live happily ever after. <laughs> Yes, sir, I missed my calling. Sire Wishbone, the Black Knight of Texas. 
bedtime stories. I think you read them very well. It usually takes me all of the Black Knight and all of Mother Goose to get them this quiet. Must be that I can bore them quicker. Oh, this seems to be the best part of the day. It's like being in a room with a host of angels. Some with dirty faces, I must admit. How'd you get saddled with all these little <laughs> angels? Saddled? Well, I, I guess it did seem like that in the beginning. I was a librarian. For 20 years, I lived behind two stories of thick Philadelphia stone in a world where my only friends existed between worn leather bindings and dusty squares of parchment. Chaucer, Keats, Tennyson, all oh, fine men all, loyal to a T. But hardly the proper association to prepare me for a career as a rancher. But my brother died and left me this place, complete with a little Betsy. And I had no other choice. So it was Westwood Ho. And just when I was beginning to figure out which end of a plow was which, Betsy found Johnny and Susie down by the river. Their folks were drowned in the storm. Seemed to be no other place for them. So... Word got around, and before I knew it, Pedro and Rob and Danny, they showed up in the barn, hiding under the hay. You know, Mr. Haggerty, at that moment, I decided I was going to go back to my stone and parchment world, no matter how make believe it was. But then one day, I, I heard them talking, and I knew then that this was where I belonged. What do you mean you heard him talking? Oh, well, was out by the barn. Johnny asked Danny if he knew who God was. And Danny said, Mr. Smithers. Well, all the children laughed, and Johnny says, how do you know that? And Danny says, Mr. Smithers always says, with God, I retire. And with God, I get up. And as Mr. Smithers goes to bed with me and gets up with me, then Mr. Smithers must be God. Well, I, uh, I corrected his innocent blasphemy. <laughs> but if I can give them that, Mr. Haggerty, think what they can give to me. Wishbone? It's after nine o'clock. Mr. Favre will have the herd up there by now. We ought to get going. Well, Mr. Smithers, he won't let him go college until class is over.
Why aren't you in class, Mike? Got expelled. Have to study all by myself in the barn. Where did you get that hat? Danny found it. He's let me wear it. Think the owner might want it back? Tough. He lent it to me. <laughs> you mind if I try it on? Yeah. Don't crush it. It's perfect. Huh. Here, get to work and hang up these clothes. Give me back my hat. You mind if I wear it while we hang up the clothes? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, taking hats away from kids. You're mean. What? Why, you? I got your hat back for you, didn't I? Yeah, but you didn't have to holler at my friend. I'll help you, much girl. Thank you. And uh, don't be bothering our friends over there while they're doing their chores. Now, look, we still have arithmetic, but I tell you what. We'll go hiking for lunch and we'll make a picnic out of it. Yeah! Hey, go I'm sure this is cow country. Oh, we've got all afternoon. What do you say we pick the first? Yeah! Listen, listen. I'm sure I heard a steer ball. Come on. guess as to how many there are, and the one who comes the closest gets an extra piece of cake. Ten hundred. Two thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Mr. Smithers, maybe you better go on into the bank and tell that fellow you got another windfall. Uh, hey, you two get back here. Those cars can be dangerous. Now, you pay attention to what Mr. Haggerty tells you. No, it's a lucky thing Mr. Haggerty came along when he did. I, ne I never would have thought of looking in this direction. Well, let's all have lunch. I'm gonna buy a dog. Uh, Mr. Smithers, this is no time for a picnic. Must be 200, maybe more. If that bank closes, you might lose this herd over the weekend. Yeah, a storm or a stampede, maybe. More likely rustlers. Uh, now nah, you're talking. Maybe you're right. There doesn't seem to be much time. Tell you what, we'll have our picnic on the way into town. What do you say, all right? Let's go. All right, now, come here. Let's go. so many watch. We found 200 more. Closer to 2 million. They're even fatter than the others. Uh, they must have straggled in overnight. As you said, sir, lightning can strike more than once in the same place. Oh, yes, quite, uh, quite, quite. Uh, uh, two, uh, 200, did you say? Well, approximately. We didn't take time for an accurate count. Oh, well, that's perfectly all right. Your word is good as gold with me, Mr. Smithers. Uh, look, why don't you, uh, why don't you sit down? I mean, uh, uh, take a deep breath and relax. I I'll be back. 
back in a moment. Yeah. Oh, no rush, Mr. Oh, uh, Clarence, uh, see that, uh, that Mr. Smithers makes himself perfectly at home, will you? At home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, why don't we play games, hmm? that you're still in the market. You see, there's a, a slight possibility that I might be able to get hold of uh, 200 head. I'm still in the market, but you'll have to make whatever deal you got by this evening, because I'm pushing out at dawn. Oh, I, uh, I can do that. Uh, the price is uh, still the same? 30 ahead. Mm -hmm. 200, let's see, that would bring me uh, $6,000, right? Well, if you don't find me here, I'll be at the hotel. All right. Fine. Fine. Do it, Mr. Randall. And it's a deal, Mr. Smithers. Three dollars a head. Did I hear you say three dollars a head? You did? Not that it's any of your business. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Haggerty, our new cook. And the first one to see those cows, so it makes it my business. And as an ex-foundling myself, I'm concerned for these orphans. So let's start by agreeing that $3 a head won't even buy the flies off those cows' hides. Very well. I'm a charitable man myself. Name a figure. Well, at the railhead, this is not a railhead. I'd go five. Mister, I'd carry them their piggyback before I'd let them go for money like that. Fifteen heads more like it. Fifteen? For each one? Greenback dollars. Now, I may be just a, a hash slinger, but I know a little bit of something about cattle. Three thousand dollars? What? That's utterly preposterous. Mr. Haggerty, that does seem to go beyond reason. Let him go. There's plenty of cattle buyers. You can usually find them hanging around the saloons after hours. Now, now, Mr. Smithers, you and I have both dealt fairly with each other up until now. Why don't we just uh, agree on a sensible price? Say, uh, say ten. Ten? Yes, but I must close the deal tonight. Of course, uh, if I don't close the deal, I will only lose a deal. But uh, you and those dear children will will suffer grievously. Well, uh, Mr. Haggerty, I, I don't see how I could spend more than 500. 3,000. Well, I can see we're not going to get anywhere this way. I'll just saddle up and ride into town. Who knows? I might even make a better deal. No, uh, no. No need for that. I've uh, come this far. I, I might as well go all the way. All right. Three thousand. Three thousand? Yes, but don't you come to me with any more of your stray cows. Well, I, uh, I feel a little badly about this money, too, Calvin. It, uh, does seem to be, uh, a little extra providence. Nine. Nine fifty-three. Three thousand. Uh, and on those papers, you can just put in my name, George Haggerty. See, I'm the one that found them. And I'll just sign with my customary X. Mr. Randall. 
off. They're running off with your cattle. Well, hurry up. Get your horses. Well, hold on now. It's your cattle. They must be your rustlers. Why, you... not going anywhere. They might not even be rustlers. <laughs> Maybe they just been and figured he'd find some cows. Oh, well, that's probably what it is, of course. Well, Mr. Randolph can handle it. How much did we make this time, Mr. Smithers? Six hundred? Well, Mr. Haggerty raised the price to, uh, three thousand dollars. Three thousand? Golly, that's more than a million. Uncle George did it. Children, I hate to throw cold water, but this is a heap of money for us to come by with just luck, you know. What do you mean? What he means, Johnny, is that anything so valuable is not so easily come by. And those cows over there are worth a lot more than any of us has ever imagined. And it's not likely that such gold on the hoof, so to speak, would be left around for us to grab in a selfish world. What he means is, uh, we think those cows belong to somebody and they lost them. And, well, it just didn't right for us to get rich at their expense. Uh, Mr. Smithers, I think I can round up the fellows that belong to this money. Children? We think you should. All right, I'll go get my horses. I see you go on in there and get our things. I don't understand you, Mr. Randall. They're wearing my brand. Well, what difference does that make? He said that you, you were moving out, abandoning them. Oh, well, what my poor simple ramrod thinks I'm going to do and what I finally decide to do it. Two entirely different things. Uh, Mr. Favors' men spotted them over here. I volunteered to help drive them back. Yes, well, I'm afraid you found them a little too late. Because it so happens that I just purchased them legally from a man who certified that he was the legal owner. <sighs> Don't see how that could be. I've seen Mr. Favors' papers. Whose eggs? What? George Haggerty. I wrote it there in the first sentence. I, George Haggerty, do hereby warrant. I see. You wrote that thing yourself. Well, I... But he couldn't read or write. This is about as binding as a rotten rubber band, Mr. Randolph. I think you'd just better forget it. You better come with me, Sheriff. I'm beginning to think I'm going to need you. Mushroom! Ice Grove! Ice Grove! Well, hello, Mike. Have you seen Mush Grove? I was just going to look for him. Well, so am I. Come on, let's go find Uncle him. Uncle George? What? Are you and Mush Grove coming back? Oh, well, I... Well, yeah. Next time we're around these parts, we'll sure come back. I'd like that. So would I. I was just going to give Mush Grove this hat. I treated Danny, my lizard for it. Besides, it fits my scope better than me. It sure does. You know that's mighty nice of you. Come on, let's go find him. Give him some. Well, I guess we're all ready. Bye, Mr. Smithers. Bye. All of you. Bye. 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 Mr. Haggerty, I was knitting this for Mr. Smithers, but he's got three. Of him, and I decided to let you have it. Isn't that nice? Why, why it's a scarf. Just what I've always needed. And a red one, too. I hope to find out who the money belongs to, Mr. Haggerty. Oh, well, I will, Robbie. Well, I already found one thing. I found out the world isn't full of little rustlers. Goodbye, Uncle George. Bye. Now, all of you stand back there. Get away from the horse. That's it. I want to see George Haggerty. 
Well, you just missed him. My goodness, you look very pale, Mr. Randolph. Come on in and sit down. What do you mean, I just missed him? Well, I, I think he uh, went to look for the rightful owner of the money. You hear that? He's making a getaway. Go after him. Slow down. Now, what do you look like? But don't sit there asking stupid questions. He was bald-headed and runty, and he had whiskers. Now go find him. Whiskers? Hmm? Runty? Oh, that sounds like Stumpy George Hogarth. Yep, he goes by Haggerty, Hogarth, Hogan. He has to stick to the ages because he's got his initials tattooed. I am not interested in the details. Go find him. Uh, I'll have to round up a posse. Stumpy George is a lot of men. Go after him! Go after him! Posse! You'll never find him! Do you realize that you cost me $3,000? Well, that makes it just about even, doesn't it? Isn't that what you made on that other transaction? I made $2,700. I had to give him $300. And if you want to know what I think, Smithers, I think those have all been the same cattle. And if he doesn't find uh, uh, Hogarth or Haggerty or whatever his name is, you are going to owe me $300. Well, uh, I'll pay whatever I'm obliged to, Mr. Randolph. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. Mr. Smithers didn't make the second deal with you. He made the first, and that one you sewed up nice and tight and legal. So if anybody's got a claim against Mr. Smithers, it's me. And by me, I just want to thank you for gathering up my cattle. I think you got off real cheap, Mr. Randolph. I mean, some folks would have to pay a thousand dollars or more for that kind of education. True, true. Oh. Gee, they were the nicest men. Oh, I can't believe that about Mr. Haggerty and Mushgrove. What do you mean you can't believe? You after what they did, and you. What's the do? 